Amen. I want us to go to the book of Genesis chapter number 9. Nataka twende pamoja katika kitabu cha mwanzo sura ni tisa. And if you have your Bibles, you can go from verse number 14. Naweza kwenda katika mstari wa kumi na nne. And the Bible says, verse number 14, it says, It shall come to per, it shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between you and me. And every living creature, all flesh, the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. Verse number 16. The rainbow shall be a cloud in the, shall, shall be in the cloud. And... I will look on it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that, the, that is on the earth. Mstari wa kumi na ine, kitabu cha mwanzo sura ya tisa, bili nasema, hata itakuwa ni kitanda mawingu juu ya inchi, upinde utaonekana winguni. Nami nitalikumbuka agano langu lililoko kati yangu na ninyi na kila kiumbe hai katika wote wenye mwili wala maji hayata kuwa garika tena kwa haribu wote wenye mwili basi huo upinde utakuwa winguni nami nitawangalia nipate kulikumbuka agano la milele lililoko kati ya Mungu Na kila kiumbe hai katika wote wenye mwili a uh, kilichoko katika inchi. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the passage you've just read, nuku na wadada kile kifungu ambacho tumesoma, this passage here is known as the covenant that God made with Noah. Na hiki kifungu kinafahamika kuhusu lile agano ambalo Mungu alifanya na Nuhu. It's known as the Noahi Covenant. Na kinafahamika kama kiagano chanuhu. And this covenant God made with Noah, na hili agano ambalo Mungu alifanya na Nuhu, is a sign that the Bible says is a perpetual sign for all generation. Na ni ishara ya vizazi vyote. That when you see the rainbow on the cloud, na kwamba ukiona huo upinde wa mvua wa mawinguni, it's a reminder Ni ukumbusho that God said ya kwamba Mungu alisema that never again ya kwamba hapata kuwa tena will he ever destroy man with water or flood ya kwamba hata muangamiza mwanadamu tena na mafuriko na garika one of the things that I find that is very sad today kitu kimoja moja nimegundua cha huzuni leo that this sign of the covenant that God made with man Kwamba hiyo ishara ambayo Mungu alifanya na mwanadamu that today is used as a sign of the homosexuals. Ya kwamba hiyo siku ya leo ni ishara ya wasagaji that that is an abomination to ya, God. Ya, na hilo ni chukizo mbele ya Mungu. But they take this beautiful uh, 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 rainbow Kwamba wanachukua hii huu pinde mzuri that is a symbol of reminder to us kwamba ni ishara ya ukumbusho kwetu that God made a covenant with us kwamba Mungu alikuagana nasi I remember one of the first stories I read when I was young very young going to Sunday school na nakumbuka nikiwa mdogo nikiwa naenda shule ya ya kanisa was this very story of how God destroyed the world and he saved only eight people Na kwamba nilisoma kuhusu hii hadithi ya kwamba Mungu aliangamiza ulimwengu wote sipokuwa watu wanane. And I will never forget that story as long as I live. Na hata isahau hiyo hadithi ilimradi uhai. In fact that day we were driving with my daughters and we were driving to work, we going to school in the morning. Na walikuwa wakiwapeleka shuleni asubuhi. And it was a beautiful rainbow. Na kulikuwa na upinde mzuri. And for me is a constant reminder that God 
says and means what he says. Na kwamba Mungu huamanisha chenye husema. And I want to talk to us this morning. Nataka ni nene kwenu asubuhi ya leo. I have titled my sermon this morning. Naye ujumbe wake unaitwa asubuhi ya leo. The power or the importance of remembering. Umuhimu wa kukumbuka. Most of us are good at praying. Wengi wetu ni wazuri sana kwa kuomba and we thank God na tunashukuru Mungu but one of the biggest challenge that we have today lakini changamoto kubwa ambayo tuko nayo siku ya leo is most of us forget ya kwamba wengi wetu husahau and this word in the hebrew in the hebrew language na katika lugha ya kiebrania it means to be mindful ya ni inamaanisha ku, ku, ku kujali to bring to remembrance kufanya watu wakumbuke to bring to mind kuleta katika ufahamu to call to mind na ukaweze kukumbuka and to come to remembrance na ukaweze kutafakari na kukumbuka now that is the bible that we have in the old testament is written in, in greek in hebrew sorry na katika agano na kale tunajua kwamba imeandikwa kwa lugha ya Kiebrania and also in the New Testament where the Greek language uh, is book Bible is written from na katika agano jipya ni lugha ya Kiyunani also it means the same thing as well it means to be mindful inamaanisha hivyo hivyo ya kwamba ni kuwa na kumbukumbu to remember kukumbuka to recollect na kuweza kufahamu and the, one, the last one which I love is a memorial na pia ni ukumbusho. Now in America they have what they call Memorial Day. Na wa America wako na hiyo siku ya ukumbusho. It's actually a day they set aside to remember men and women who have fought various wars on behalf of the nation of America. Na ni siku ambayo imewekwa au imetengwa kukumbuka wale mashujaa wa mapigania kwa jeli ya America. Now this word appears in the Bible about 300 and 25 times na hili neno hutokea katika biblia mara 320 na but when, you, but when you count the different uh, variants of this word it appears more than 550 times in the bible lakini ukiangalia yale maneno yanaweza kumaanisha sawa sawa na hili neno ni zaidi ya maneno 500 that means brothers and sisters hiyo inamaanisha ndugu na wadada that is very important for us to remember ya kwamba ni muhimu kwetu kukumbuka. Now we just read this passage that you have read now. Twice the word remember was used. Mara mbili hilo neno kukumbuka limetumika. Now when God reminds us double uh, a double uh, uh, appearance of the word na Mungu anapotumia hilo neno mara mbili he wants us to take notice. Anataka tuliweze kuliona. He wants us to pause. Anataka tukaweze kusimama. He wants us to reflect. Anataka tukaweze kulifikiria. Now the notion of the future and the past na katika ile hali ya hatma na iliyopita between the Jews and the Gentile thinking na katika mafikra ya Wayahudi na mataifa is very different. Ni tofauti. We we in the Gentile world see the future ahead of us. Na katika hali ya mataifa huwa tunaona hatuma mbele yetu we wait to exploit tuko tayari ku, uh, kuenda mbele na kutengeneza njia and the past is behind us na ile nyuma yetu ni hali iliyopita but the jewish man is not so lakini katika ulimwengu wa wayahudi sio hivyo they say the past is in, is is in, in front of us lakini wanasema yale yaliyopita yako mbele yetu visible where we can learn yanaonekana au yanadhihirika ambapo tunaweza kujifundisha kwayo and we can grow na pia tunaweza kukua the future is behind us na ile hatma yetu iko nyuma yetu and seen na haionekani so we need to intentionally remember what has happened in the past inatupasa tukaweze kukumbuka kimakusudi yaliyopita ya kale somebody said this those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it 
na mwingine akasema wale ambao hawezi kukumbuka yaliyopita wamehukumika let me repeat that again slowly for us wacha nirudie hiyo those who cannot remember the past wale ambao hawezi kukumbuka yaliyopita are condemned to repeat it wao hukumika au inawapata inafika mahali wanayatenda tena so that's why we learn history na hiyo ndio muhimu wa historia we learn history one of my best subjects that i love was history in school na jambo moja nilopenda sana ilikuwa ni historia and also when i went to bible school i i learned about church history na pia katika theology akajifundisha historia ya kanisa and it's important for us to always remember the importance of history na ni muhimu kukumbuka umuhimu wa historia because we need to learn from history ni kwa sababu ni muhimu kujifundisha kutokana historia so brothers and sisters kwa hivyo ndugu na wadada this is what is known as a creation principle na hii ndiyo inafahamika kama ile kanuni ya kujithamini and why do i call this issue of remembering a creation principle na katika hii hali ya kukumbuka ndiyo inaitwa hiyo kanuni ya kukumbuka it's a god idea kwa maana ni wazo la Mungu kwa maana tunaiona katika vifungu we've just said about the no high covenant na tumeona katika kile kiagano cha nuhu and then if you go further on you find the abrahamic covenant na ukiendelea hapo mbele utaona kile kiagano cha abrahamo and brothers and sisters it's important for us to take note of this na ni muhimu kwetu kuona au kunukuu hii because god always remembers kwa maana mungu daima hukumbuka and that god does god need to remember je mungu ni lazima akumbuke but god uses this language lakini Mungu anatumia lugha yake so that you and I can understand him ili wewe nami tukaweze kumfahamu let to him na tukaweze kuhus from this point of view na katika kutokana na mtazamo huu because this idea of remembering comes from him kwa maana katika hilo mwanzo la ukumbuko la ukumbusho linatoka kwake now when you go to exodus chapter 24 Unapoenda katika kitabu cha kutoka 24 sorry, sorry Exodus chapter 2 sorry Exodus chapter 2 pili 24 and it says the following na inasema hivi so god heard their groanings Mungu akasikia kilio chao and god remembered na Mungu akawakumbuka his covenant with Abraham akakumbuka kiagano chake na Abrahamu with Isaac na Isaaca and with Jacob na Yakobo this is when the children of Israel were in captivity in the land of Egypt na hapa ndio wana wa Israeli walikuwa katika utumwa and wa Misri a, and when god made the covenant in genesis chapter number 15 with abraham na, na mungu akawa amefanya kiagano na abraham katika kitabu cha mwanzo he told him na akamwambia that your, your seed na akamwambia mbegu yako au zao wako shall be slave in egypt for a, year, for a number of 400 years 400 years kwamba uzao wako utakuwa watumwa Misri kwa zaidi ya mia, kwa miaka 400 and we see here god remember that covenant that he had made with abraham na tunaona hapa mungu anakumbuka hicho kiagano alichofanya na abrahamu and bible says he remembered and encountered a man called moses na Mungu akakutana na mtu anayeitwa Musa and he gave him the mandate to go and deliver the children of Israel from captivity na akampatia jukumu la kwenda kuwakomboa na kuwatoa wana wa Israeli kutokana utumwa the same verse if you go to number, number same uh, 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 book if you go to number uh, number 6 Exodus 6 verse 5 na kitabu hicho hicho cha kutoka sita na mstari wa tano You find also this very same words unapata maneno yale yale I have heard, I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel whom the Egyptians have kept in bondage and I have remembered my covenant ya kwamba nimesikia kilio na maombolezo ya wana wa Israeli ambao wa Misri wamewaweka katika utumwa nami nimekumbuka agano langu 
these scriptures I'm reading for you today, na hivi vifungwa mavyo na vileta kwenu leo, I want you to see that remembering is a God idea. Nataka uone ya kwamba kukumbuka ni wazo la Mungu. And it's so important that God is constantly repeating this very word for us. Na ni muhimu ndipo sa Mungu anairudia hili neno. If you go to uh, Deuteronomy chap uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 9, kumbukumbu la Torati 4 tisa. Only be careful for yourself and watch over your soul diligently so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen and they do not depart from your heart all the days of your life and make them known to your sons and your great grandsons lakini jihadari nafsi yako ukailinde roho yako kwa bidii usije ukayasahau mambo yale uliyoyaona kwa macho yako yakaondoka moyoni mwako siku zote za maisha yako bali uwajulishe watoto wako na watoto wa watoto wako we are instructed hapa tunaagizwa to not forget usisahau ama tusisahau but remember lakini tukumbuke the things you have seen god do yale mambo ambayo umeona mungu ameyafanya we are to share it Ni, with the next generation inatupasa tuwashirikishe vizazi vijavyo brothers and sisters ndugu na wadada you've seen a lot of things that god has done for you Umeona mambo mengi ambayo Mungu amekutendea whether good or bad. Pengine anaweza kuwa mazuri ama mabaya. I'm always reminded the words of Job. Nakumbuka maneno ya Ayubu. When he says, are we only going to thank God for the good and not the evil? Sita mshukuru Mungu tu kwa mambo mema lakini si maovu. So when you're remembering, kwa hivyo unapokumbuka it must be intentional. Ni lazima ukawe umekusudia that you are ought to remember the good and the bad. Ya kwamba utaenda kukumbuka yaliyo mema na mabaya. Because when you look when you remember the good and the bad, na unapokumbuka mema na mabaya, you can see the faithfulness of God. Utaona uaminifu wa Mungu. And you can glorify God and thank God for his grace. Na unaweza utaenda kumshukuru Mungu kwa neema yake. Because it was not for the grace of God. Kwa maana isipokuwa kwa neema ya Mungu, you and I will not be standing here today. Wewe nami tusingekuwa mahali hapo leo. So it's leo. important for us to always reflect. Ni muhimu kwetu tukaweze kukumbuka. To always think back. Tukaweze kukumbuka yaliyopita. To always pause ili tukaweze kusimama kidogo and look back and be grateful for all the things we've gone through in life na tukaweze kukumbuka yaliyopita na tukaweze kuwa washukrani kwa hayo nothing happens to you by chance hakuna jambo linalofanyika kwa bahati mbaya it's by god's design ni kwa sababu ya mungu amekusudia because god has a destiny where he's taking you na mungu anafahamu hatima anapokupeleka however hata hivyo we need to learn inatupasa tuweze kujifundisha from the past kutokana na yaliyopita because that's part of our reflection kwa maana hayo mambo yanaleta ufahamu so it's important for us for us kwa hivyo to always share with others that's what the bible tells us here to share kwa hivyo inatupasa tushiriki tuwashirikishe wengine the things you've seen god do yale mambo umeona mungu akifanya Why am I saying this brothers and sisters? Kwa nini anasema hii ndugu na wadada? We need to sit down with our children. Ninatupasa tuwaketishe wana wetu. We share with them. Tuwashirikishe. Where God started with us. Pale mahali Mungu alianzia nasi. How we started the ministry. Vile tulianza huduma. Because these things are important for me to share with them. Na kwa sababu hii ni muhimu kuwashirikisha because they need to know our history. Ninawapasa wafahamu This is where we started from. Mahali tumeanzia. This is where we are. Na hapa ndipo tuko. And this is where we are going. Na hapa ndio tunaelekea. And it's only reflecting from the past. Kwa hivyo unakumbuka kutoka yaliyopita. We can appreciate today. Na hata leo. I know that God is going to be faithful in the future. Na kwamba Mungu atakuwa mwaminifu kule mbeleni. So who are you sharing with? 
Wewe unamshirikisha nani? Who are you sharing with today? Je, wewe leo unashiriki na nani? Part of the uh, the vision of this house uh, is to win souls and make disciples. So one of the requirements is to be a witness for Christ. And one of the things you can intentionally do is to look back. Is to remember how God has brought you through the mud. Some of us forget where God has gotten us from. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 7 says, It says, Remember the days of old. Kumbuka siku za kale. Consider the years of all generations. Na ukumbuke miaka ya vizazi vote. So here, brothers and sisters, is a clear uh, imperative, a clear command. Na hapa kuna mwito ulio wazi. That we are to remember. Ya kwamba inatupasa tukumbuke. We are to call to mind. Inatupasa tukaweze kumbuke. We are called to recall what God has done through all the years in all the generations. When we go to Exodus chapter number 20, verse 8 to 11, God instructs us to remember the Sabbath. Na katika kitabu cha kutoka ishirini, mungu anatuita tukaweze kuikumbuka sabato. And interesting, this, the words, the, this verse starts, remember the Sabbath. Na hii anatuambia kumbuka siku ya sabato. He is not asking you for your suggestion. Hakuulizi maoni yako. It's not, it's actually a command. Hiyo ni amri. That we are given. Ambao tumepewa. When God tells something to do, to remember. That he has given us six days to do our own things. Six days. And he gives us one day to reflect and remember him. Brother and sister, when God says something, he knows best. He knows that the human capacity that he has given us, that he has made us with, that we can only go up to six days of anything. That we need one day to sit and rest and do nothing. You find people dying. People actually die for exo- from the exhaustion. People even die because of being overworked. Watu hufa kwa sababu wamefanya kazi zaidi. People die before their time. Watu hufa kabla ya wakati wao. Because going against what God has instructed us. Kwa sababu ya kwenda kinyume na maagizo ya mungu. So when God says something, brothers and sisters, kwa hivyo mungu akisema kitu mungu, we must take it as a gospel truth. Na tunazima tuichikulie kama niyo kweni kabisa. So brothers and sisters, it's important for us to remember what God has done. God values relationship. That's why he wants us on one particular day that we gather. That, that we reflect. That we commune with him. That we fellowship with him. That we are able to be grateful and thankful for the blessing he has bestowed on us. Job number 14 verse 13. It says, Oh, that you would hide me in shore that you'd conceal me until your wrath returns to you. That you set a limit for me and remember me. Laiti ungenificha kuzimuni 
ukanilinda kwa siri hata ghadhabu zako zitakapo pita here we see brothers sisters job is actually calling on god na hapa ayubu anamuomba mungu that you hide him in shawl in kwamba angalimficha kuzimu that he conceals him until his wrath has passed ya kwamba akaweze kumficha mpaka hiyo shari iwe imepita that you remember him ya kwamba akaweze kumkumbuka brothers sisters ndugu na wadada when you remember god unapomkumbuka mungu god will remember you mungu atakukumbuka if you forsake god ukimwacha mungu god will forsake you mungu atakuacha brothers sisters god is calling us today ndugu na wadada mungu anatuita leo that we are to remember him ya kwamba inatupasa tumkumbuke 1 Samuel verse 1 to 11 Samueli wa kwanza moja mstari wa 10 and this is the story of Hana na hii ni hadithi ya Hana and Bible says she made a vow and said to Yahweh of the armies if you will indeed look at the my affliction of your bond servant and remember and not forget your bond bond servant but you will give your bond servant a son then i will give him to you yahweh all the days of your life and a razor shall not come to his head akaweka nadhiri akasema eh bwana wa majeshi ikiwa wewe utaliangalia teso la mjakazi wako na kunikumbuka wala usinisahau mimi mjakazi wako na kunipa mimi mjakazi wako mtoto mume ndipo mimi nitakapo mpa bwana huyo mtoto siku zote za maisha yake wala wembe hautamfikiria kichwani kamwe here was hana in a desperation na hapa tunamuona hana akiwa katika hali ya kufinyiliwa here was hana in a, in a time of need hapa tunamuona Hana akiwa katika mahitaji and Hana was crying to God na Hana akamlilia Mungu that he ought to remember him ya remember kwa, her kwamba akaweze kumkumbuka brothers and sisters ndugu na wadada how many of you have called on God in your time of need ni wangapi umemuomba Mungu na kumuita Mungu wakati wa mahitaji yako and God came through for you na Mungu akakusikia You remember God na ndipo ametuambia kumbuka Mungu God will remember you Ukimkumbuka Mungu Mungu atakukumbuka If you forget God Ukimsahau Mungu God will forget you Mungu atakusahau And where did I get this idea from Na hili wazo lilitoka wapi If you go to uh, the same book of Job chapter number 24 Ukienda katika kitabu cha Ayubu 4 uh, 24 19 and 20 Sari wa 24 As the drought and the heat consumes and melts snow so shall still those who have sinned The womb forgets them The womb the, the worms feed on them and they are remembered no more Sari wa 19 chaka na hari pukausha maji ya theluji kuzimu nako nao ambao wamefanya dhambi tumbo lililomzaa litamsahau bu litamla na kuona tamu hata kumbukwa tena na udhalimu utavunjwa kama mti so that's why i got that idea if you forget god god will forget you here yeah. is referring to the sinner when the sinner dies that's the end of the sinner because he had no time to remember god when he was still alive na mwenye dhambi ya kifa hapo ndio mwisho wake kwa maana hakuwa na wakati wa kumkumbuka mungu so we have nothing we can say for someone who has died without knowing the lord there is no amount of prayer you can pray for this person who has departed who has gone to shul hakuna jambo la ziada unaweza kumfanyia huyo mtu ama maombi ya huyo mtu ambaye amekufa katika dhambi so some people believe that some people we go to purgatory kuna wengine wanaamini watu wataenda pale kwa kuzimu and those who are alive can actually make a deal or pay them for them that they can be released from purgatory 
Na wale ambao wako hai wanaweza kuwaombea ili wakaweze kutolewa pale. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Na hiyo ni uongo. Psalms 88 verse 1 to 5. Oh Yahweh, the God of my salvation, I have cried out by day and in the night before you. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my cry. For my soul has had enough troubles. My life has drawn near to Shoal. E hey, Bwana Mungu wa wokovu wangu mchana na usiku nimelia mbele zako maombi yangu yafike mbele zako utegee ukelele wangu sikio lako maana nafsi yangu imeshiba taabu na uhai wangu umekaribia kuzimu nimehesabiwa nime pamoja nao washukao shimoni nimekuwa kama mtu asiye na msaada I am reckoned among those who have gone down to the pit I have become like a man without strength, forsaken among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, and they are cut off from your hand. Nime sabiwa pamoja na washukao shimoni, nimekuwa kama mtu asie na msaada, miongoni mwao walio kufa nimetupwa, kama walio wawa walalao makaburini, how ambao wewe huwakumbuki tena wametengwa mbali na mkono wako will you perform wonders for the dead or will you depart will the departed spirit rise and praise you sila mstari wa 10 wafu je utawafanyia miujiza au walio fariki watasimama na kuhimidi will your graciousness be declared in the grave your faithfulness in abandoned. Fadili zako zitasimuliwa kaburini au waminifu wako katika uharibifu. Will your wonders be made known in the darkness and your righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? Miujiza yako itajulika na gizani au haki yako katika inchi ya usahaulifu. Remember God and God will remember you. Forget God and God will forget you. Kumbuka Mungu na Mungu atakukumbuka na ukimsahau Mungu atakusahau. We have a story in Luke chapter number 24 verse 14 to 20. We have this story that we know of the thief hanging on the cross, the two two thieves hanging on the cross. The one was taunting and howling insult at Jesus and the other one told Jesus that Jesus remember me. That was his prayer. That was his cry. Hanging on the cross with our Lord. Na tuko na hii aditi na tunapahamu kuale wezi wawili walikuwa mesulubiwa na Yesu. Moja akawa anamsimanga kristo na mwingine akawa anasema unikumbuke. And what Jesus say? Today, today you shall be with me in paradise. Na Yesu akamu akikishia leo utakuwa pamoja nami paradiso. Brothers and sisters, thank God we have a God who remembers. Ndugu na wanada tushukuru Mungu tuko na Mungu anaye tukumbuka. Thank God that God does not forget. Kumbuka shukuru Mungu ni Mungu ambaye hasahau. Anything you've done for this God. Kila jambo umemfanyia huyu Mungu. Any sacrifice you've made for this God. Na kila kujitolea ambao umefanya kwa Mungu. He takes note of that. Yeye huinuku. Any tear you have shed. Kila chozi ambalo umetoa. Bible says it takes our tears. Biblia inasema huchukua machozi yetu. And the, those actually are like incense for him in his presence. Na ni kama ni manukato ama ni dhabihu mbele yake. I don't know what happened to me. I don't cry as I need to ought to be crying. Hafahamu ni kwa nini hali vile inapasa kulia. Because I need to have many tears by now. Because if I look back where God has gotten me from, I need to shed tears because it was not for the grace of God. I won't be able to stand here today. So what do you need to do, brothers and sisters, today? Kile na tupasa kufanya leo ndugu na wadada. 
that will help you to always be mindful ambayo itakusaidia kukumbuka what God has done ile Mungu amefanya one of the things that God has given us as instruction is the, is the Lord's table mmoja wapo ya kile kitu ambacho Mungu ametupatia kama maagizo the Lord's table is a time for us to sit and reflect Meza ya Bwana ni wakati wa kuketi na kukumbuka. In fact, I feel we need to be having communion often. Bible says we need to do it often. Na mimi nafikiria inatupasa kuwa na meza ya Bwana kila wakati. Why? Kwa nini? The early church did that. That's how the early church did. They 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 had the Lord's table often. As they met, Bible says they met from house to house, they broke bread. Kanisa la kwanza walikuwa na meza ya Bwana kila baada au mara kwa mara. So the Lord's table was intended for purposes of remembrance. Na meza ya Bwana likuwa imekusudiwa kwa ukumbusho. That's why the Bible says Jesus says remember when you do this you are proclaiming the Lord's death till he comes. Na ndipo neno linasema kumbuka ukifanya hivi unatangaza kifo cha Bwana mpaka arudi. So the Lord's table is not only a command but an instruction and a time for us to reflect and look back. Kwa hivyo meza ya Bwana ni maagizo na amri kwetu kukumbuka. That's the time we need to sit and first of all look at the cross. Na ni wakati na kupasa kuketi na kutazama msalaba and appreciate the work of the cross. Na ukaweze kukubali na kazi ya msalaba and to be thankful for what Jesus has done for us. Na ukashukuru kile Kristo amefanya and also to look at our own life it was not if it was not for the cross we would not be here today. Na katika maisha yetu kama si kwa ajili ya msalaba tusingekuwa hapa. That's why we are told not to eat the Lord's table irreverently na tusi tumie ama tusikule meza ya Bwana katika haraka so we are called to honor that na hivyo inatupasa kukumbuka na kuheshimu hiyo because it's an act of remembrance for what Jesus has done for us kwa maana ni kitendo cha ukumbusho wa kile Kristo ametufanyia nashukuru Mungu Father we thank you Baba tunakushukuru we bless you Thank you for your word. Asante kwa neno lako. That your word will go forth. Kwamba neno lako litaenda. It shall now return to you void. Litaenda kukata kuwili. But shall accomplish that we send it forth to do. Halitaenda bure lakini litakuja kutimiliza chenye umekusudia. Bless your people. Bariki watu wako. Encourage them. Nendo kawatie moyo. Even as they go through the week of oh God hata kwa juma zima I pray the Lord may you bless them and keep them. Naomba ukaweze kuwabariki na kuwaifaa. May your face shine upon them. Wacha nuru yako ikaangaze maishani mwao. May may you be gracious to them. Na ukaweze kuwa neema katika maisha yao. May you be the lifter of their countenances. Nenda ukaweze kuwainua nuru zao and grant them your shalom, your peace. Nenda ukawapatie amani yako that surpasses all understanding ambayo ni zaidi ya ufahamu wote whatever they may face this week chochote ambacho watahusika katika wiki hiyo they know that greater is he that is in us wafahamu ya kwamba ni mkuu aliye ndani mwetu than he that is in the world kuliko yule ambao yuko katika ulimwengu i bless him now in the name of the father of the son and the holy spirit na bariki sasa katika jina la baba la mwana na roho mtakatifu and all god's people said Amen. and all god's people said Amen. let's give jesus a mighty hand of praise amen god bless you